Hey guys, welcome to the Financial Minute. My name's Josh. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Today we're going to be working on step two of the car buying process, or part two I should say, in the bu car buying process. We already completed part one. If you haven't seen that video already, please check it out. I'll put the link right up there. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed, please think about giving the video a subscribe. It really does help. And uh, give that like button a big grand slam if you could. And as always, guys, we'll get right to it right after this. I always like to start with asking the car salesperson what the best price is. What's the out the door price you can give me on that vehicle? And always include the term out the door price. So that includes all taxes and fees that they might add on there um, and see what they come up with. And don't forget guys, remember to approach this as I'm just buying the car straight out. I'm not trading anything in to start with anyways. You want to get an honest, fair pr purchase price for this vehicle before you bring in the complexities of trading in another vehicle. So always remember to start with the uh, purchase price only, leave the trade out of it, and they will ask. They're going to be like, well, do you want to trade anything in? Uh, is there anything you want to trade? Just say, uh, nope, we're just planning on buying this car outright. You might mention that you're you're willing to finance the car. and. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to finance the car. Uh, at the end, you can say, you know what, we're just going to pay cash for it. But you might want to mention uh, you're going to finance the car. Um, this way, they're going to give you a better price. Imagine that if you finance that car. Because they make a lot of money on the financing uh, in the back end of the financing department. So uh, mention that, you know, we're going to finance the car most likely. So they may ask you, so are you planning on financing this car or buying it? Uh, don't just come out and say, I'm planning on paying cash for this car, even if that is the, the case. Don't say that. Leave that till the end. <laughs> and remember, guys, remember those uh, printouts we talked about in the previous video? But if you haven't watched the previous video, please do. I'll put the link again up there. But uh, we talked about bringing out printouts for the value of this vehicle you're looking to purchase. So let's say, you know, KBB uh, Kelly Blue Book gives a certain value for the trade-in, uh, private value, and uh, retail. You want to purchase this uh, at a deal. If you're, we're, We've been talking about at a dealer. So if you're at a deal, you want to purchase this uh, somewhere just a little bit above the, the private value. Or if it's the NADA, I think they have like three trade-in values and, um, and dealer retail. Uh, somewhere in the in the trade-in values is probably what you want to purchase this. Of course, this is going to va vary from vehicle to vehicle, so you kind of want to see what other vehicles are selling for on the market. Um, but yeah, generally you want to purchase this uh, for less, less than retail is the goal anyways. This would also be a good time to mention any flaws, uh, issues that you saw in the vehicle. Uh, in the negotiation process, you want to kind of mention these things. And you don't necessarily want to be bragging about the vehicle. Oh, that's the best vehicle I've ever driven, etc. Just keep that to yourself. Just mention the flaws. Um, you don't have to be overly nasty or negative about the vehicle. But just mention the stuff you saw that was wrong with it. Whether it be scratches, dings, dents, stains, etc. Or go. Hey guys, remember. Don't forget, you can always walk out. Don't feel like you have to ever buy a vehicle. That is your biggest bargaining chip. You can just mosey your way out the car dealer. You Okay, I'm stuck here. I, I can't mosey my way out or else you won't hear me. But remember, you can always leave. You don't have to buy the car. I think some people forget that. Uh, they think, you know, well, I'm here now. I've done this, got this far. I got to buy this car no matter what. Uh, but do, don't think that way. You, gotta, you can leave any time throughout this process. If something doesn't feel right, sketchy, they're pushy, etc. Get yourself up and leave the joint. Go go somewhere else. Uh, that's your biggest bargaining chip right there. Um, a lot of the times in the past, I had I had. Let's be honest. I struggled doing that. I would like to, you know, I've got this much time invested in this process. I just want to get this over with. But remember, I'll be right back. I'm back. 
I would actually go to a dealership that had a vehicle that I was eh, iffy, somewhat interested in, if it was for the right price, and I would make an absolute lowball offer on this vehicle and just see what they say, you know? The the worst thing they can say is no. And I mean, when I say lowball, I mean like, like low trade or, uh, you know, trade in value offer. And they'll say no, most likely, and and this is where you get to practice walking out. Uh, you can maybe make a slight counter offer, say, hey, I could pay a little more than this. Uh, still make it a really low ball offer because this isn't necessarily the vehicle you want. And uh, um, and if they still say no and it doesn't seem like they want your your uh, your uh, purchase that bad, uh, walk out. And they may be like him and, well, we could uh, throw in a free service contract, etc. And you're like, no, no, I want it this price. Let's keep it simple. And just practice walking out. It's good. It's good to do that because it it gives you. It just gives you the know-how that you can do it. A lot of people don't realize they you know they just don't do it. Uh, so I think that's the number one thing when purchasing a car is remember you can walk out and practice it if possible. Maybe I get a little too into this. I don't know. Maybe most people aren't as into the car buying process as me, but I just think it's interesting you know the the relationship between the car buyer and the salesperson okay guys so we've we've kind of got a price nailed down for the vehicle and then we're about ready to go to you know we're, we're summing that up with the car salesperson now's a good time to mention you know what what if i did trade in this car we do have this car whatever it is uh what if we did trade it in we weren't planning on it etc but what if we did what could you give me for it and the car salesperson might say something along the lines of, well, what is it? And let me see. And they're going to be more honest with you on what your vehicle's worth to them now that you've already negotiated a fair purchase price to you anyways and to them on the, the vehicle you're purchasing. Whereas before they might have been less negotiable on the purchase price and just kind of given you a better trade in value for your vehicle and just not you know, off, not offered such a good price on the vehicle you're buying. But now they're going to give you what they really think your vehicle's worth. If you did get them to a, a uh, the low bottom dollar price that they're willing to go on that, that purchase vehicle. So this will help tell, tell how much of a good deal you were getting on that, um, uh, on that uh, vehicle you're buying. Especially if they offer you a really low dollar value on, on your trade. If possible, guys, before you even uh, think about trading a vehicle, and bring it over to Carvana or uh, CarMax and get a quote from them. Uh, that'll give you a, a probably a lower end trade-in value for your vehicle uh, because they'll buy your vehicle straight out without you know even without even purchasing a vehicle from them. And a lot of people don't know this, but many other dealers will do that too. You can bring your car to pretty much any dealer, and they'll give you money for it, even if you don't buy something from them. Uh, you just got to really be on your game, because they're going to try and lowball you, because th that's the only way they're making money. Also, remember, guys, even after you know, you've negotiated the price of the vehicle, don't tire out yet. You still have to negotiate your trade uh, and kind of know uh, what your trade's worth. Bring printouts from Car Kelly Blue Book, uh, as we mentioned in the first video, and I'll I once again have a link up there for that. But uh, know the value of your trade, know the fair value, not necessarily the value they give you, but the fair value. And if they're most likely going to offer you a lot less than the fair value, and you got to bring them up to the fair value. Don't let them lowball you and give you the low, low trade in value that they want to pad their wallets. You want to get the best bang for your buck. So make sure you negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Don't give up yet. Okay, guys. So now that we've negotiated the purchase price, we've negotiated our trade, we have a, uh, a fair purchase price and a fair trade in value and keep those separate. Um, and so maybe they owe you money. Maybe you owe them money. And it depends on what you're trading in. But uh, most likely uh, you owe them money still. So... Either way, it's time to go to the finance room, and that's part two of this video. Let's head over to the finance room. I'll see you there. So this is going to be a little shorter because this has already been a bit of a longer video. Uh, but basically, the key with the finance room is read those contracts, guys. Don't let 
anything get past you. Read, read, read. Be careful. And you're probably exhausted from doing this all, all the, uh, you know, the negotiating already. And this is where they get you because they know you're exhausted from that. And a uh, finance manager, this they are the guys that make the money, okay? They get paid well, and they got to make sure they make some money on this transaction. So if you got a really good price on this vehicle, which, which you should have, um, they really got to do their best to make sure they tack on some add-ons like warranties, uh, tire warranties, finish warranties, undercoatings, top coatings, middle coatings. Uh, coatings on the, the interior, uh, warranties on the wheels, the tires, uh, and of course the warranty on the whole vehicle itself at the separate warranty. Uh, these are all warranties they're going to offer you. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't necessarily get any of these warranties. That's really up to you. And of course this is a good time to remind you this is all for you know entertainment purposes. You got to do your own research, etc. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, this is for for your uh, entertainment purposes only, um, but yeah, make sure you read these contracts. I think that's pretty much a fact. Um, and uh, don't get what you don't want. If you don't want a warranty on your wheels, and tires, and keys, uh, say no, thank you. And they will be pushy. Remember, these guys, and they'll lower their pricing too. All the pricing on all this stuff is negotiable. So, if it's maybe something you do want. You might say no initially, uh, or maybe you can offer me a better price. I might be interested uh, if you can take half the price off, because a lot of times there's a lot of markup on these warranties. So just know that going into it. And if, if possible, do your due diligence before you go. I know there's so much due diligence to do in purchasing a vehicle, but do your due diligence on aftermarket warranties for... Um, for the vehicle, for the tires, the wheels, etc. Anything you m think you might be interested in. Know what these services are worth ahead of time so they can't stick you with uh, a warranty. I was at a dealership once and they were, boy, this salesperson was pushing hard. The sales manager was pushing hard for me to get that aftermarket warranty. And I kept saying no and he kept lowering the price. He started out for this particular vehicle at like close to four grand and by time the the negotiating was over he had dropped it to below 2000 for the same exact product and I still went without it because I knew I wasn't gonna hold that vehicle that long and I wasn't gonna need it so but boy he really wanted me to get that warranty also they may say that well you can always cancel this later know that if you do a lot of times there's a fee to cancel and ask that question um, so if you're planning on canceling it later, don't get it, in my opinion. That's my opinion, as there are all these topics. My opinion. Remember that, guys. But I hope maybe this helps you out a little bit somewhere along the way. And now that you've purchased this vehicle, you've signed all the papers, and there are a lot of them, uh, and you've read them all carefully, you're probably exhausted, but you got yourself a good deal. Um, on a vehicle that you did the due diligence on and I'm not saying things can't happen things break and Maybe you went with the warranty uh, a lot sometimes the aftermarket warranty is worth it for the right price I'm not saying it isn't depending on the model, etc uh, If it's a more reliable vehicle, maybe it's not as worth it if it's a less reliable vehicle Maybe it's more more worth it um, But yeah, you anyways you did the due diligence You know what you're getting yourself into a lot better than you would have had you not done all of the due diligence before you went to the dealership and uh, I hope you enjoyed these two videos I hope this helps you out a little bit in the purchase process I sure wish I had known some of this when I was younger because I could have saved thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on vehicle purchases I can think of one transaction in particular where I got hosed I don't know if there's a better term for that but I got taken um, and I just don't want any of you to get taken in your next vehicle purchase so do some of the due diligence, and you will save yourself a ton of money. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the button a big grand slam in the like department. Also, uh, subscribe. And remember, only you can make your financial dreams come true. Don't delay. Get started today. I will see you in the next video. Be safe, God bless, and I am out.